Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into our latest UK general election opinion poll tracker video. It's been a couple of months since we've done uh, one of these, but uh, quite a significant day today as the uh, winner of the Conservative Leadership Contest, contest is going to be announced uh, very shortly. I'm recording a video uh, to just on 11.30, about an hour's time, the uh, the, the uh, next leader of the Conservative Party and therefore the next Prime Minister is going to be announced. So uh, I thought we'd do a tracker video as we come into the final day of uh, Boris Johnson's government. I thought we'd have a look and see how the opinion polls are doing in terms of voting intention. Uh, the latest prediction for the next general election from Electoral Calculus. Uh, I thought we'd have a look at Boris's um, approval rating uh, but, uh, as he's coming to his final day. And uh, then I thought we'd have a little look at uh, expected leader list trusses. Uh, uh, ratings. So uh, that will be coming up at the end of the video too. Should be an interesting watch. Please like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for getting back. If you're enjoying these uh, opinion poll tracker videos here on the Gaming Parts YouTube channel, then let me know in the comments and we will do more of them for you. Of course we will. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is go over to Electoral Calculus and have a look at their latest prediction. This is based on the opinion polls during the month of August. So here we go then, 3, 2, 1. And uh, Electoral Calculus are predicting a Labour majority of 16. 1, 6 at the next general election. Only for the first time this Parliament that uh, Electoral Calculus through the opinion polls has uh, predicted a Labour majority. So Labour now on a predicted majority of 16 with Electoral Calculus's prediction. That's based on opinion polls conducted during, during uh, August, and uh, I think that shows us that during this summer, since uh, the Conservatives um, uh, removed Boris Johnson as their leader and uh, went into the uh, leadership election, I think that shows us that we have seen a swing from Conservative to Labour. So uh, <laughs> I don't think the uh, leadership contest has gone down all that well uh, with the uh, general public. But uh, let's see how the uh, how the the vote shares and whatnot are stacking up. So this is the party column just here. This is trade 19 votes and seats columns just here. And then we've got predictive votes with uh, seats at the low, uh, medium and high end uh, just there. So based on the opinion polls during um, August, the Conservatives are predicted to get 31.4% of the vote, virtually down to percent now. Uh, Labour, 41.7% of the vote above that critical, all-important 40% uh, mark. Uh, Liberal Democrats on 11%, Reform on 2 Green on 5 SNP on 4 and Plaid on 0.9%, others on 29 so that gives the uh, Conservatives a central prediction in terms of seats of 222, 2 seats. There is a 2 2, two seats. Uh, there is a margin of error with that. So at the low end, the Conservatives could go down to just 92 seats. At the high end, they could still be around 3, 316, 316 uh, and be the largest party. Um, Labour now have a central prediction of 333, taking them above the critical uh, 326 that is needed for an overall majority. Uh, they could at the low end go down to 248. They could at the high end be on 475, which would be an absolute landslide. Liberal Democrats uh, on 19 seats with a central prediction. Could be as low as 8, could be as high as 37. Uh, no seats for reform. One seat predicted for the Greens. I assume that's Caroline Lutz's seat. SNP uh, 51. They could go up to 54 and get every seat in Scotland. They could go down 29. And Plaid on 5 seats. Uh, they could go to six, they could go down to three at the low end. And that is a significant swing, obviously, from... Uh, from Conservatives to Labour compared to 2019 and 2019 general election, the Conservatives got nearly 45% of the vote, biggest vote share since um, 1970 general election, I think. Labour got 33% of the vote in 2019, not too bad from a vote share perspective, but in terms of seats, they went down just 203, which was their worst seats, uh, resulting seats, since uh, the 1935 general uh, election. 
So a very, very significant swing uh, from uh, Conservative to Labour since 2019 general election and quite a significant swing over the past couple of months. I think that is the most striking thing there because when we did this before, Labour were short of an overall majority. When we did the last track of video, which I think was in July, based on June's opinion polls, uh, Labour were, were uh, some way short of an overall majority. They were the largest party, but some way short of an overall majority. Now, uh, the end, by the end of August, Labour uh, are forecast to get a, a majority of 16. So obviously, through the Conservative leadership contest, there has been a further swing uh, from Conservative to Labour. These are the opinion polls that that prediction is based upon uh, during July. So I'm going to show you July and August uh, opinion polls as well, it's been a couple of months since we did uh, the uh, the last track of video. So generally during July, uh, Labour had a low double digits lead, although some of the polls had them into single digits. So for example, Redbeer Wilton on the 31st of July had the Labour lead at uh, 4%. And YouGov on the 27th, 28th of July uh, found Labour only 1% ahead. However, most of the opinion polls during um uh, July had Labour with quite significantly. So Ipsos Mori, for example, had Labour uh, with a 14% lead, very largely uh, for Labour during uh, July. Conservatives on 30 uh, percent of the vote, Labour on 44 percent of the vote. Delta poll uh, just here had uh, Labour with an 11 percent lead. Savannah Congress had Labour with a 13 percent lead, and and so on. We had a 15 percent lead here uh, for Labour with Savannah Congress. Uh, so it's under 30% of the vote on that poll, down to 28%, Labour on 43% uh, of the vote. So Labour generally in, in a lot of the polls during uh, July um, with a uh, with a low double digits, so sometimes getting into the, tea, the teens. As, as we go into August, this is how the opinion polls look for Labour in August. There aren't as many opinion polls during uh, August, but we do see some very significant Labour leaders beginning to uh, appear, most notably people polling. I'm not sure who people polling are. I think they're a new company. But they found on the 30th of August, uh, Labour having a 17% lead. That is getting into very, very dangerous territory <laughs> for the Conservatives, going down as low as 25% on that poll, with Labour on 42%. That's the kind of leads Labour was getting during the uh, 1990s, you know, the 92 to 97 Parliament that finished up with uh, a Labour landslide in the 97 general election. So the Conservatives will not be wanting to see uh, too many polls showing like um, uh, 17, 20, 25% leads, I wouldn't have thought. Um, that is at the high end, but we do also see other polls give me Labour significantly. So Delta poll, for example, with a 13% lead for Labour. Redbeer Wilton again with an 11% lead right at the end of the month. We've got people polling again, 14% lead uh, there. We've got uh, we've got YouGov with an 8% uh, Labour lead. So that's still on the lower side, but of course it's up on uh, the Labour lead up compared to uh, to July's um, opinion poll uh, with, with YouGov, where they had uh, just a 1% lead. And uh, we've got a 15% lead just here again. That's with uh, YouGov. Uh, so that's very significant Labour lead for, for YouGov. So it's going down to 28% with that poll uh, and Labour up to 43%. So there has obviously been a quite significant swing. Uh, over July and August uh, from the Conservatives to Labour during the Conservative leadership contest, we have seen quite a significant swing. Uh, and, uh, and and so now the prediction is a Labour overall majority. This is how the overall graph is looking at Wikipedia uh, based on all opinion polls for the next UK general election. You can see what's happened uh, I think here. So Labour already had a lead consistently since uh, like November, December 2021. That's when crossover occurred during Partygate. Uh, and Labour has had a consistent lead since then. But it's really from around here, I think. That's about the time of the uh, Conservative leadership contest getting going that we see uh, uh, Labour lifting up, Conservatives dropping down. Um, 
on that graph. So, so clearly there is uh, there has been a swing from Conservative to Labour during the Conservative leadership contest. Boris Johnson in his final day as uh, Prime Minister, final full day as Prime Minister. I think they change over tomorrow with Her Majesty, don't they? So, um, two uh, more polls uh, uh, here. Uh, Wikipedia uh, for uh, for approval uh, for Boris Johnson. 30th of June, YouGov uh, found um, Boris with a net approval rating of minus 48. Uh, so uh, this is termed as well badly, and uh, 23% in that poll approving of Boris Johnson, 71% disapproving of him. And then on the 7th of July, Opinion uh, asked uh, the uh, question as favourable or unfavourable, uh, and found 22% approving of Boris Johnson and uh, and 62% disapproving of him, giving him a net approval rating of minus 40. So that's the reason Boris is out. Uh, the, uh, you know, after party gate op opinion moved very significantly against him. Before that, in 2021, you know, through the first half of 2021, he's quite po popular. He's in the green uh, and, and not doing too badly. But it's really from, like, end of summer into the autumn, especially from uh, party gate onwards, that he became... Very, very unpopular, and uh, you know, reached the reach a, a level where it would appear to be very, very difficult for him to be able to recover uh, his popularity before the next election. So that's the reason he's out. In terms of Keir Starmer approval, we've got a couple of polls uh, there again. YouGov and Opinion from the 30th of July, uh, from 30th of June, 7th of July. So this one just here. Uh, giving uh, Keir Starmer a negative approval, a net approval rating uh, of minus 26, so very poor, uh, you know, approval rating for, for Keir with that one. Opinion, not as bad as that, minus one, but he's, he's not that popular. Keir Starmer is not overwhelmingly popular, and like, that would be the one thing that the Conservatives can cling to here. Um, Keir Starmer is nowhere near as popular as, say, Tony Blair was during the mid-1990s before the 97 general election, which would make a landslide at the next election, you know, seemingly quite difficult for Labour uh, if their leader is not is not that popular. But, you know, he's much more popular than Boris Johnson, clearly. And, uh, and in a moment, we'll see how he looks against um, the Conservative uh, leadership contenders. This is how the overall approval is looking for the government. As we come to uh, the end of the uh, Parliament. Actually, I think that's the wrong page. So I'm just going to pause that so I can get the right page up with that. Hang on a moment. Right, OK, so that is the page uh, now. That just used to show uh, government approval from, like, um, July 2019. But uh, they decided to change that. And uh, so we can see government approval right way from the beginning of the Conservative tenure. Uh, which is interesting, but it doesn't really tell us, you know, it's not really that helpful for, <laughs> for like, the current situation. Anyway, currently, uh, this is where we are. So, over here, uh, government disapproval is on 63%. 63% disapproval of Boris Johnson's government at the end of it. 19% uh, approving of, of his government. And uh, he's virtually down with the dope nose uh, as well. So, um, this is how uh, Theresa May's government... Uh, ended just here, uh, where we had, let's see where that was, so 71% at the end, 72% at the end, uh, disapproving of uh, Theresa May's government, 20% don't know, and 9% disapproving. So, uh, Boris Johnson's government at the end, not as unpopular as Theresa May's government was, but nevertheless still pretty unpopular there, virtually down, uh, the, the, the number approving virtually down, with the dope nose, but uh, Theresa May's government at the end was more unpopular than than, uh, than Boris Johnson's government was, and uh, we can go back to like the closing days of uh, of um, maybe Cameron's government as well, which would be at the uh, would be around there, wouldn't it? Around sort of uh, there, like uh, end of May, early June. So at uh, the 
Tracy Davis and uh, Cameron's government in uh, in 2016, 61% disapproved of his government, 18% approved, and uh, again, crossing over with the don't know. So it's always an ominous, ominous sign when the uh, number of people approving of a government uh, meets parity with the people who don't know, uh, then that is always an ominous sign. You do get the idea, though, that generally governments are unpopular, you know, uh, you see through throughout most of the par parliaments, right way back to 2010, the number of people disapproving of the government uh, above the number of people that approve of the government uh, throughout most of the last sort of uh, 12, 12 years. And, and so it does give you the idea that generally governments are unpopular, but the British are... <laughs> you know, a little bit uh, tough, a little bit harsh on their governments at times, I think. But uh, they keep voting for them, even when they're not that popular. So just very quickly to have a look at uh, the leadership contest, as, as the new leader is going to be announced, probably when you're watching this video, it will have been, been announced, actually. So this is some research from Opinium, who will make the best Prime Minister. Uh, so we've got uh, Rishi on 21% uh, of the vote. We've got Keir Starmer on 29% of the vote. And none of these on 36% of the vote. So Keir with a lead over Rishi Sunak. I'll just highlight where we're looking. So just here, uh, we've got 29% for uh, uh, for Keir Starmer against 21% for, uh, for Rishi Sunak. And in terms of Liz Truss, uh, we've got, um, we believe, we think Liz is going to be the next Prime Minister. We think we've got uh, Kisala at 29% against 20% uh, for Liz. And again, none of these on 37%. So neither Rishi Keir, uh, Liz Keir uh, are that you know, are that popular, um, but, but Keir Starmer clearly with a lead over both Rishi and also uh, with uh, with Liz uh, in terms of that particular poll. So they should have just done some polling uh, as well. So a um, little bit ominous for the Conservatives, uh, maybe this polling, but uh, they, they have asked like a general voting intention uh, question, which you will see within the Wikipedia page when we do the next opinion poll track video, of course, which gives uh, Labour 10% lead, 43%. To 33 percent conservatives, conservatives are up three on that poll labor down one but a little bit ominously when uh liz trust a little bit honestly for conservatives when liz trust is named as the conservative leader in this poll we see uh the, the labor lead uh extending actually so um the overall poll has labor on 33 percent but when liz trust is named uh the labor lead goes uh, the labor uh, share goes to 46 percent uh, uh against 33 percent just in the general voting intention question but when liz trust is named the conservative share goes down to 29 percent um which uh, gives labor a 17 percent Lead when Liz Truss is uh, named. That is a little bit ominous, I think, for the Conservatives. Uh, will be a little bit worrying uh, for them, that I think. That will be a little bit worrying. But we shall see, you know, we shall see what the public make of uh, Liz Truss, if indeed she is to be the next uh, Conservative leader and next Prime Minister. Right then, well, that's it. That's what it take me of all of the developments in terms of the latest opinion polls. We'll do it all over again next month and uh, see whether Liz will get a bounce. Normally, we do, although I say we're quite harsh on our governments and politicians and, and leaders uh, and whatnot, normally we do like to give a fair wing, you know, to, to an incoming leader. So there is normally a bounce for a new party leader and prime minister. Uh, so I would expect, despite that survey from Salvation, I would expect that Liz Truss will get a little bit of a bounce if she does um, become the leader of the Conservative Party and Prime Minister. But but how much of a bounce she gets, you know, have to wait and see. And maybe if that poll is, you know, how things are looking in terms of what the public think about her, then uh, maybe she won't get, maybe she won't get a bounce. We'll just have to wait and see. And we'll be finding out when we do the next uh, opinion poll tracker video um, in October, of course. If you enjoy this video, please you like, share, subscribe. And thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And uh, drop a comment. Let's know about this and all of our videos. 
And for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.